At this site, Matthew Fontaine Moray developed the modern science of oceanography. Asaph Hall discovered the two satellites of Mars, and Navy astronomers helped the nation achieve scientific independence. But by 1893, it became evident that the site needed a new mission. The natural fogs that came off the river during humid Washington summers gave this neighborhood its name, Foggy Bottom. Foggy Bottom is called Foggy Bottom for a reason. It's almost always foggy there with the fogs coming from the Potomac River. And so that makes it very difficult for a telescope to uh, try and make a discovery or even to do routine observations. Making matters worse was the industrial pollution, much of it caused by factories just a few blocks from the observatory. There's a statistic from 1885. Out of a possible 365 nights a year you might observe with the telescope, only 17 nights were good. 17 nights clear all night long. That doesn't mean they didn't observe on other nights, but they were what they call partial nights. You might get an hour here, an hour there, before the foggy bottom clouds came in and made observations impossible. As a result, the Navy decided to move the observatory in 1893 to where it still resides today on Georgetown Heights. To no one's surprise, the observing conditions improved considerably, so much so that the great equatorial is still in use. Its superb 26-inch lens, shaped without benefit of computer or laser, is thought to be the oldest scientific instrument in continuous use. The hilltop at Foggy Bottom represents a significant historical data point for the United States Navy and for the Navy Medical Department. The Navy turned the property over to the Navy Medical Department, which moved the Naval Museum of Hygiene to this location which featured a sizable assortment of medical instruments and nautical artifacts, many collected by Navy surgeons on their journeys around the world. Then, in 1902, the Naval Medical School moved in, and with it, the tradition of science and discovery continued. But now, microscopes replace the telescopes. Here, newly commissioned physicians learn not only to be Naval officers, but also what they wouldn't find in a civilian medical school, the treatment of ballistic wounds and burns, tropical medicine, and the kind of medicine they would practice as Navy physicians serving in worldwide naval hospitals, on the battlefield with the Marine Corps, or with the fleet. Between 1906 and 1910, new buildings sprang up when the Washington Naval Hospital moved to the compound. There was an attempt to actually bring together all aspects of Navy medicine under one location and to make sure that the administration and the clinical parts of Navy medicine were all brought together. In a sense, it was the first attempt to actually get to patient-centered care. All of Navy medicine from the clinical, the corpsman, and the nursing aspects were housed here at Foggy Bottom as well as dentistry. And then, came World War I, which provided a test bed for two of the latest technologies, the airplane and the submarine. Two new wings were built to accommodate uh, these new disciplines, a school of aviation medicine and a school of undersea medicine. Later, the Naval Hospital became the Naval Medical Center, where it operated at the Foggy Bottom site until 1942, when all medical treatment moved to the brand new National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. Today, the campus is the home of the Navy Medical Department's administrative headquarters. Known as the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery, this department directs the management of the Navy's medical mission. That includes the recruitment, training, and assignment of physicians, dentists, nurses, medical service corps officers, and hospital corpsmen. The Bureau of Medicine and Surgery represents Navy Medicine's hub, the center of a wheel whose spokes reach worldwide, not only providing health care to Navy and Marine Corps personnel and their dependents, but offering humanitarian assistance to other nations when disaster strikes. The Hilltop is also the headquarters for the Navy Surgeon General. It has been my privilege to have been stationed here to have been the Surgeon General and the Chief of the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery, and to have had a small part of the history of not only Navy medicine, but also of the United States 
and to actually be here, housed here, walk here, live here, breathe here, where some of the earliest leaders and some of the icons of America also walked, breathed, and lived. What about the future? The building that played such a key role in the history of American science is now an endangered species. The 2005 Base Realignment and Closure Act mandated that the Bureau of Medicine and Surgery leave its home in Foggy Bottom and co-locate with the other military medical services. One thing is certain, the historic yellow brick building with its gleaming white dome will remain as Foggy Bottom's crowning jewel.